Happy Monday, everybody. And let me fix this camera on Instagram. There we go. Do I like that? I don't know. Uh, happy Monday. Welcome back to Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah from Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV. Jeff Lewis Live, Jeff Lewis Extended, Cavo. I mean, so much Cavo talk, so many phone calls. Oh, my gosh. Hello, Melanie over on YouTube. How are you? Please make sure you like the video. Make sure you're following me everywhere under Sarah from Texas. Make sure you join the Facebook group. It is such an easier way for us to all to get to know each other over there. Um, it's just easier on a Facebook group to chat all the different subjects and stuff. Not a shit ton going on. I hope you had an amazing weekend. Did you wish Jeff Lewis a happy birthday? Did you wish Shannon Bedore a happy birthday? Hello, DJ Rockstar Aaron. How are you? Um, I hope you did. Has anyone called in? I feel like this camera's annoying me on Instagram. Okay, the angle was annoying me. Uh, is anyone called in, you think, and asked if Jeff is going to have a Jeff Lewis live show in the Chicago area? Or if anyone tried to call in today and ask more about Heather McDonald, like they took so many phone calls, but I'm just curious if they like only took the calls they wanted or if nobody called in with those. I don't know. Thank you so much for all the happy birthday wishes. Thank you, Gina over on TikTok. Thank you, DJ Rockstar. Aaron sending me roses on TikTok. Thank you, C Cecily, for the happy birthday wish. C Kathy, I'm trying to call you Karen, Kathy. I can't read today. Um, Maria on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great birthday. Lots of eating. Is anyone else's pants tight? Is this just me or I'm just eating what the hell ever lately? I mean, seriously. Oh yeah. Christina says there might be a Cabo show, but I mean a Jeff Lewis live show, like, you know, sell tickets, like the one he did in, um, LA at the bourbon room in what was that? December, right before Christmas, right before Christmas. Um, wait, what? Somebody on Instagram says, do you think, hold on my camera. Do you think you went too far with the Jeff Lewis birthday post? People are not happy with you. I mean, cause I posted some pictures of me and Jeff Lewis for his birthday. Okay. I mean, literally I can't make anyone happy. So you know what? F it. You just do what makes you happy. The truth always prevails. All the naysayers and what have you just they can keep on being unhappy with life i guess that's so crazy somebody's unhappy about a, an instagram birthday post like what it doesn't even make sense i am literally so tired of the haters coming at me it's just so ridiculous so ridiculous thank you lori i did have a great birthday um literally ate the entire, so my husband for Mother's Day and my birthday, he often gives me, yeah, if you didn't like the post, speak up. I would love to hear what y'all, what, what y'all, what people really think, like curious, like what do they care? Anyways, um, a share bag, a share size of almond M&Ms ate the whole dang thing. Now, do I think some of my kids, do I think the hubs ate a few as they walked by, but did I eat the majority? Yes. I left them open. He also got me some beautiful flowers for my birthday. Uh, I left the whole bag open on the coffee, uh, on the kitchen Island. But I, every time I walked by, I grabbed three or four, like literally there is zero calories in birthday candy, right? Zero calories in birthday dessert, all the things. Oh my gosh, for sure. Um, thank you, Hamilton. I appreciate, uh-oh, let's loon about, let's loon about mad now. Um, anyways, but I do, I am curious, just has anyone tried to call in and like their call didn't go through? I mean, like you told them what you wanted to talk about. I'm just always curious, like things maybe they don't want to take, whether that's Oscar or, um, Jameson, you know, taking the call or maybe, you know, if Jeff reads the little things and there's calls he doesn't want to take, I don't know. So curious. They're taking so many more phone calls now on Jeff Lewis extended. So I'm just curious today, 
I'm shocked that nobody would try to call in and ask about Friday night. Nobody would call in over the last few weeks and ask if there's going to be a Jeff Lewis live show. You know what I mean? Um, thank you, Kathy and Cecily. We just want to start stuff. It's so crazy. Seriously. Um, Mary Kelly says, I loved your birthday post for Jeff. Ignore the haters. They obviously don't have anything else to do. Like, seriously, like, I don't even understand, right? Anyways. Yay, Tina, you caught me live over on TikTok. Shout out. Um, speaking of all the phone calls today, not just today, lately, they've been, um, I don't think Jeff is as mad about this anymore. I feel like he used to be pretty anti, this, my, I feel like my camera keeps moving. It's driving me nuts. It keeps sliding down. It's not. Um, anyways, but people calling in and saying, shout out Shane. I thought for a while, Jeff was like not having that. And it was kind of, I think they're doing it very quickly now that they're doing it. You know what I mean? And Jeff's Shane is very quickly saying like, Hey, you know, so anyways, if you've called in, let us know what you, what you did, what you said. Uh, and if you get nervous, you know what I mean? I think it is a little bit nerve wracking. Yes. <laughs> Kathy says, if you can't eat the entire bag of candy on your birthday, then oh well, carbs make us happy. And on your birthday, eat the whole cake and walk. I haven't even walked. <laughs> I didn't even go to Body Pump Saturday. I had had some stuff going on that I couldn't couldn't make it at the time that it that it has. Um, I didn't either. Okay. Tell me what you heard Jeff say. Cecily says, Jeff said something on the extended show about Heather McDonald, but I didn't catch it exactly. I honestly, it was so quick. I uh, felt like Shane said something like, ask her about something that they can buy uh, Krista or Heather in Cabo because they were on vacation with them last year for spring break. I couldn't, I couldn't get a, I, I couldn't understand exactly what he said. Like, are they talking? Are they not? Anyways. We can ask Heather, he said. Okay, Robin said. Jeff said we can ask Heather. So maybe that thing means things are going well. Who knows? Um, oh, thank you, Hamilton. Made made sure to join live for my birthday. Thank you. Um, had a great birthday. Had a great birthday. Um, I did watch part of 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After this morning. Someone had told me, they had warned me that it was going to be about Jasmine and Gino, and it absolutely was. So I had posted this as a reel recently because they had made it as like a promo TLC where um, for their honeymoon, they are honeymooning in a camping in Minnesota or somewhere, somewhere up north uh, in the summer. And, um, you know, Jasmine starts looking kissing, caressing, all the things to Gino's toes. And then, so I'd made a reel of that because I was like, oh my God, was not prepared for this. Didn't want to see it. La, 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 la. Uh, then she starts talking about where she can put her finger. Have y'all seen her fingernails? I'm just like, there's no way in hell Gino would let that happen. I was just like, you know, I mean, it was so incredibly gross. And they're just gross in general, right? I don't, gross in so many ways. I feel like they're playing us. I feel like clearly she admits to lying to him a lot about pretty big issues, like where she's spending the thousands of dollars he's giving her, uh, her infertility issues that she's had in the past. You know, from day one, Gino has made it known that he wants to have a baby with her although he doesn't seem to want to do it with her to have a baby. And I'm like, that's an issue. I literally think, I don't know. I can't figure them out. I think they're so caught up. Uh, shout out Kim. I think they're so caught up in being on reality TV and the money that they make from it. Did Gino ever even go back to work after he quit his job? Remember how he quit his job without telling her again, something he should talk to his fiance about. He quits his job. Uh, I think that he'd been out a long time to, so he can be with her all the time whenever she came over from uh, Panama before they got married. I don't know if they ever, if he's ever returned to work. Does he need to? Yes. <laughs> Kathy says 90 Day Fiance is a hot dumpster fire that I can't wait to see 
what you in the chat think, because I watch going, oh, wow, this is worse than sister wives for sure. Oh, you did? No, but I'm going to lay out today. Um, I didn't have time Saturday. Wait. Yeah, Saturday, I didn't have time. My my amazing lawn was being done and they were in the backyard, in the front yard. I wouldn't have laid out in front of them. But um, I'm going to lay out today. It's, an, it's a UV of five, which is not the best, but I'm so, so pale right now from the winter. Let's see if I can get any sun today. Anyways. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, Heather says, just wondering, oh, Robin, because I have seen photos of Megan with Heather McDonald. Yeah. At the, um, the tennis match a couple of weeks ago. Right. Um, anyways, Ed and Liz, another couple that I think, I mean, I don't know. They're on, I'm only halfway through last night's happily ever after. Wait, last night's. Yeah. Uh, but Ed and Liz, as we know in real time, spoiler alert, la la la, have already broken up. She has left their home in Arkansas, moved back to San Diego. Uh, shows the most I've ever seen of Liz's little girl. She's like eight. I mean, she's much younger than I thought. I guess, I guess it does make sense. I think she was around four when they met, but they were never showing her. But then she's going to be there for the summer. So, um, you know, and Ed has an adult daughter does not have a relationship with her at this time. I don't think he has a relationship with his mom. Um, so what's going on with that? Um, anyways, I don't know. Clearly it didn't work out. It is. It is the dumpster fire that I can't stop watching. Oh my goodness. What else? Ariana Maddox bought a $1.6 million home, I guess by herself. The guy that sold it to her is on buying Beverly Hills named Ben. I am obsessed. We won't chat about it today. I'm going to give y'all a couple more days, maybe a week. So everyone can watch season one and season two. Do you have to watch season two? You don't really have to, or season one. It's on Netflix. You don't have to watch season one of Buying Beverly Hills before season two. Uh... I think it's probably good to, to do though. It kind of gives, especially if you, I'd watched it so long ago. I literally forgot about one of the people that was engaged in, in, in the meantime, this break, this engagement has been broken off. There's two engagements that have been broken off. Anyways, it's 10 episodes. So insanely good. It is, it's like they just threw even more money at it. The houses are more expensive. They're more sexy. They're gorgeous, like totally unattainable. Like I can't even imagine having the money that they have, the way they dress, their hair and makeup, the shots, the drama, like what's going on business-wise. Like to me, maybe it's because it's been so long. We need Million Dollar Listing LA to come back because I'm losing excitement over that darn show because buying Beverly Hills was so good. It's like a more real down to earth, but still um, sexy housewives ish vibe of like selling sunset. Does that make sense? I feel like selling sunset was kind of like just they spent, you know, 10 hours in the chair, you know, glam chair. And then they went and acted like they sold a house for 10 minutes. I feel like buying Beverly Hills is way more real. Like they dress more casual when they're in the office. They're all talking about business. They've got personal relationships. They gossip a lot. Like if you tell someone something, it is being told to the person for sure. So I'm so good with that. Sherry says you just jumped into season two. So I think you can absolutely just jump into season two. We will not talk about it, but I am dying to talk. Hey, Carolyn, you're an Aries also. Um, dying to talk about season two. The cliffhangers at the end were very unexpected. I almost want to Google and see what's going on currently with some of the stuff. They absolutely touch. A lot of people are saying that we learn more about Mauricio and Kyle's relationship, especially how they came and talked to the daughters on buying Beverly Hills than we did on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um, and you definitely see a, a, 
you definitely see how Mauricio's thoughts change on the relationship towards the very end of season of, of, of episode 10 from episode one. So um, I was wondering that too. Sherry says, I'm surprised Bravo lets Kyle and Mauricio be on Netflix. I brought this up last season with season one because I always hear of some people saying that like some Bravo limits who they can be on, but then you'll see them be on all these podcasts. So I don't know. I wasn't really sure. Um, oh, thank you, ha Hamilton. Um, I always make certain to like Sarah's videos and catch the replay for the algorithms and to support her channel. Thank you, Hamilton. I really appreciate that. That means the world. That means the world. Um, Robin, what's that mean? No Heather talk. Yeah, there was definitely no Heather talk today. I think we were all listening, expecting some for sure. I do. Hamilton says, I miss Million Dollar Listing. The Joshes and Tracy and Heather, um, the two best friends, they're not on anymore. What I need to is MJ. I feel like MJ, I don't have the list in front of me. Isn't MJ on later this week? I need someone to call in and ask MJ, why isn't she shown? Who knows? Is MJ? Okay. So if you watch Buying Beverly Hills, there's groups. So there's the whole agency, the big umbrella, right? And then underneath that is the Umansky group, the, the, I'm making up names, the Williams group, the, the John Smith and Ben group. There's different groups of like, I don't know, three to seven people on a team. If y'all all watch, you know, Million Dollar Listing LA, you've learned about all these teams that kind of break off, but they're under the agency. So we know that MJ works for the agency as famous as she is, as popular as she is, as much of a shit stir as she is. She knows reality TV. I, I, I didn't expect her to be on there because I hadn't heard that she was. I hadn't seen any promos, but I wanted her to be on there. I'm just curious why she's not, but I also don't even know which real estate team she's under. Like who's, is she with the Umansky team? If she is, then she purposely be purposefully didn't film with them because they show obviously the Umansky team a lot. Anyways, it is so good. It is so good. Oh my God. I love that ALW. You're celebrating your daughter's birthday. Enormously huge. Oh, what a rich chunk. We're celebrating my daughter's birthday this week at an enormously huge Airbnb. I feel like a queen. Oh my God. I love that for you. Send me a video of the fanciest room in the house. I would love that. Um, anyways, Ariana Maddox, it didn't say anything that the article didn't say anything about, um, whatever's going on with her and Tom Sandoval in that house. So I'm assuming she didn't even need the money from the sale of that house. Did he buy her out already? Like none of that information has come out as far as I know. Um, I didn't know anything. Um, there is rumors that Eileen Davidson might be in talks to come back to Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Does anyone want her back? I feel like she's a great uh, soap opera star, actor. I don't know. I, well, I do know. I didn't love her. I, I, I can't even remember a huge storyline about her on Beverly Hills for, for those seasons that she was on. I definitely... I don't know who we need, but we are seeing some shakeup with Potomac. Uh, we're seeing some shakeup with several people not coming back. The latest one being Candace uh, not coming back. Um, uh, anyways, a lot of shakeups going on. I don't know. Don't know. Eileen was a voice of reason, but a boring housewife, Krista says. Yeah. Do we want a voice of reason on these reality shows? I mean, I don't know. I feel like Andy Cohen might be giving the the kiss of death that he called Lala Kent the voice of reason on Vanderpump Rules. I'm like, oh, we need her to be a mess. We need her to just keep being a hot mess. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Darla. We won't say what, but you work with somebody from Young and the Restless, and she says that Eileen isn't a nice person. But I think rumors can be started about anyone. You know what I mean? You can have an, you know, maybe she had a bad, even Andy Cohen. Who's the guy from um, uh, Queer Eye TV show? And they were, all these people were coming out saying he was a terrible person. Then you had all these other people saying, coming out saying he was a great guy. So who knows what to believe, right? Um, 
Who's Catherine Edwards? Oh, her, isn't that her name on Young and the Restless? Who's Kathleen? Isn't that her name? Her character name would give Erica a run for her money. Yeah, but that's not who it is. I mean, it's actually, you know, Eileen Davidson, which is kind of a snooze fest. If anything, what is Lisa Renna doing right now? I mean, surely she's available. Melanie, shout out Melanie. She says, fingers crossed for a Chicago live event. Miss Jeff, or call into the show. Somebody call in and ask. He needs to just let people know because people keep messaging me saying, did I miss an announcement? Has he said something? And I'm like, no, not that I've heard. So I feel like people are waiting to find out. And um, not that we know of. Elisa on TikTok says, any info on Jeff and Heather? Mum's the word. He didn't say a word today. And it was interesting because Sarah Colonna actually, you know, used to be professional and personal friends with, or I don't know, used to be, is, I don't even know, uh, with Heather. And then Justin Martindale was on the uh, extended show. So my, how all the people are meshed. Uh, Jason on Instagram says, where's Pedge? I assume he's in the Chicago area rehearsing for this play that he's in. And I think it opens April or May. That's when he was talking about the chumps going up there. You're right. Amanda McCants hasn't been on at all. And I don't think she's been to like chump events. Maybe she's just blown. I mean, she was huge on TikTok already. TikTok or Instagram or both. Who knows? Um. Anyways. Oh, she was? I don't even remember who that was. Hamilton, she was in the fifth of the sixth season. She's married to a football player and didn't like Faye Resnick because of the OJ book. By the way, Faye Resnick, you know, big interior designer. Uh, she designs one of these big fancy houses that's on buying Beverly Hills. It's like the way they're all intermingled. They're also selling um, uh, Dr. Nassif, one of his houses or his house. Anyways, it's just fun. I, I just love when they talk about other famous people on, you know what I mean? Um, never heard anything about it. Nanette says, whatever happened with MJ selling Chaz Dean products on her Poshmark? Poshmark, Poshmark, whatever it's called. Um, we never, no, we don't know what's going on with Paige Davis either. I don't know. I've got lots of good questions that we don't know the answers to. Somebody call in and ask Jeff Lewis. <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> Kathy does no more Rena, please. I mean, she is good content though. They need something. You know what I mean? They need something for sure. Um, oh yeah. Oh, Hamilton. I mean, I just watched an episode of Botch last week. It's and they had um uh they had Heather Dubrow on playing pickleball with Dr. Nassif's wife. I mean, she's super hot. Super hot. They've got like a little two or two or three year old little girl. Um, did you catch Kathy Hilton's Instagram live Friday night with Sutton Strack? Very interesting. I mean, all of a sudden I see the little circle that uh Kathy Hilton is live, and I'm like, oh, you know, what's she live for? It's Friday night, you know, what have you. Uh, we'd gone to dinner for my birthday, and then I was watching a um I was watching, might have been watching by I was watching something on TV. We'd already watched Palm Royale, which I didn't love. I know. I watched one episode. I don't know that I can keep watching it. Maybe it'll get better. Anyways, um, and Kathy Hilton was live with Sutton. Basically, the gist of it was just to let us know that they are okay. Like, they're not feuding anymore. They were together. They were in, I think it looked like it was maybe a birthday party or a celebration for Kathy Hilton. It was very interesting. Like, and then they said, uh, they did it for like 10 or 15 minutes. Some guy that I think Sutton was on a date with is talking about Marlboro Red. I mean, cigarettes? I don't even know what he was talking about. Did anyone understand what that was? At some point, Sutton, uh, uh, Kathy Hilton said to him, are you promoting this? Like, why are you keep mentioning? And I swore he was saying Marlboro Reds. And all I could think about was the cigarettes. Like, I was so confused. Did anyone else see that? Um, oh, thank you, Evie. Shared the live on TikTok. Uh, it was interesting. Interesting. 
Okay, let's get into today's Jeff Lewis Live. Speaking of interesting, Jody Sweeten, I don't know that she's going to come back again. I mean, if she is still, if she is reading the comments, I only read like 20 of them. Oh my God, they were not kind. Underneath, so JL Jeff Lewis, every day he takes a picture with his guest. And so today's picture is Jody Sweeten and Sarah Colonna and Jeff. Usually Shane is in it also. Uh, people critique what they're wearing, how they're standing, how tan Jeff is, um, you know, his smile or not smile. I mean, what the guests are wearing, what Jeff is wearing, his moves, his shoes. I mean, they critique everything, right? But one thing Jeff has been adamant about lately is don't tear apart the co-hosts in the comments. He's mentioned multiple times Jody Sweeten specifically felt annihilated by the comments and didn't want to come back. So when he announced that she was coming back today with Sarah Colonna, I was like, okay, we all ripped her a new asshole. Oh my God. Like she is bleeding back there for sure. Yes. Jen Helen says, uh, Jeff said in the after show that Jody had a lot of coffee, you could tell, but he also said, I love her. You know what I mean? He loves who he loves. He doesn't love who he doesn't love. I don't think there's any convincing any, of anyone. He gets a lot of complaints about Jody Sweeten. Uh, he gets complaints about Patty Stanger. Who else are some of the big complaints? Uh, those are the two biggest ones I can think of. And, you know, he still has them on. So anyways, hopefully she is not reading the comments. Uh, you know, he made it clear. And, you know, I don't think he usually tells people kind of what to do. Uh, or, or, you know, the listeners, but he was adamant, like, just send it to me in a DM. Like, don't comment underneath the coffee picture and annihilate the co-host and then especially tagging them. So I didn't pay attention if anyone had tagged her, but it doesn't matter. The co-host often probably always read the comments, even during the commercial breaks, if I, if I had to guess, because sometimes you can even see that Jeff will read a comment or, you know, Shane will, you can tell that they are reading the live comments as they, on the commercial breaks, because they'll say them sometimes. Um, Ada says, I get Patty. She overtakes the show, but I like Jody. I mean, the one complaint I saw a lot was that people were saying they couldn't figure out that it was two different female guests. Now, I've heard very clearly Jody Sweeten and Sarah Colonna talking. First of all, they were talking about different things, right? Um, yeah, Christine says Jody is too much. A lot of you just said that Jody Sweet needs to be on with just herself and maybe. And I've said this before. I think when it's two of the same gender, especially if their voices are similar, I have a hard time. I could make out Jody and, and Sarah mainly because of what they were talking about. But I understand, you know, Joey, Jody Sweeten hasn't been on in a while. Sarah Colon has been on what, maybe three, maybe four times. Uh, so people may not recognize their voices as much. But when you have, to me, a male, uh, two females or two males on, the voices can get a little bit mixed up. You know what I mean? Um, anyways. Jeff starts off the whole thing. I think we were all on pins and needles waiting for him to tell us. He starts off the weekend. He says his birthday weekend was almost perfect. And then he rips into his dog, Toby. Toby was not a great dog. Last night when they were out for his birthday dinner at steak 48, he tore up stuff. He um, ate the water bottle and got water all over the couch. I mean, ripped up his Louis Vuitton. Why was his wallet? Wait a minute. Why would you, what all got ripped up? Why would you not have your wallet with you? Now, I don't know how it works with Jeff Lewis out for his birthday dinner. I think they said nine people were there. I don't know that he let somebody else pay. I'm assuming he didn't pay for his own birthday dinner for all nine people. But I don't know why his wallet wouldn't be with him. Because he said even like credit cards got chewed up, right? Um. Louise said, it's so weird that Sarah Colonna is coming on so often lately, considering she was so close with Heather. I mean, I don't know. I think at some point, even last week, we had um, Countess Luann on the same week as she was with Jeff Lewis Live and Juicy Scoop. Oh, thank you, Sarah, for the roses. Um, why did you barely mention Kristen? 
I thought y'all were besties. Kristen Takeman? She's not on today. And I don't claim to be besties with any of these chumps. They are people that I listen to. Um, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. She's not on today. She was on last week. Um, Lauren says he only takes one card in his ID when he goes out. Oh, he explained that today. Okay. Well, I didn't hear that. That is weird. You know, knowing Jeff, he doesn't want any bulk, right? <laughs> Anything adding to his butt. Um, uh, oh, Jason says the Sarah Colonna stuff is a game Jeff is playing. I don't know. I think he, I don't know. I think I think you have to have people on. And I think people that are good on radio are going to go on a lot of people's radio shows. I mean, just last week, Countess Luann was on at least four or five different podcasts. So, you know, you, you just do it whenever it comes up. I think, I think they're all going to take, no one's going to say no to a Jeff Lewis live show. I don't think, I mean, they clearly get lots of fans and lots of a bigger audience, maybe even a different audience. Cause like, I didn't know of Sarah Colonna. Y'all had told me about her on Juicy Scoop, but I didn't listen to Juicy Scoop enough to really know the regulars on Juicy Scoop. You know what I mean? So I learn about a lot of new people when they come on the Jeff Lewis live show. Zach Noe Towers, Joey Zalzig, uh, uh, Tinks, gosh, Sarah Colonna, a lot of people. You know what I mean? Who knows? He did not. Jet said, did he mention that he sat with Heather McDonald at the Louisiana show on Friday? Didn't say anything about it. He mentioned going. He mentioned uh, Fortune Feimster Saturday night, going to that. He mentioned his birthday dinner and he mentioned a birthday party for a kid, um, like a kid's birthday party. Um, and then something about Harry being at the house, but no details on that even. I wonder if Harry's, I don't know, is it getting more serious than we thought? I don't know. Um, I think, okay, so Jay says, I agree with Sarah Colonna coming on so much more than Fortune. Weird. I think Fortune, Fortune is so busy. And doesn't she do another radio show at Sirius XM like four days a week for like two or three hours with other people? She does like two or three podcasts now. She travels a lot. So I think I, I like the amount that Fortune is coming on. I really do. Um, yes, he's, Phyllis says Harry stayed at a hotel. Yes, he did. But he came, I thought he, he, he did come to Jeff's house because he said something about he didn't yell at um, Toby the dog as much because Harry was there, right? And then like, yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah, Phil's wife on TikTok says he meant, Jeff mentioned that he could ask Heather McDonald a question about pharmacies in Cabo. So they must be talking again. Yes. Who knows? Who knows? Um, Fortune Beamster does. She works a lot. She travels constantly for work. She's a major hustler. She's a major hustler in the comedy scene. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. Hamilton said, Fortune is a ray of sunshine. She was so good on Kelly Clarkson. Norman Lear was on? Wow. A few weeks back. Love her. Very sweet. Wait. Okay. Did he answer? Debbie says, I direct messaged Jeff and asked him if he and Heather are back together, friendly again. Who gets custody of Justin Martindale? He's my favorite guest in the world. <laughs> That's funny. I feel like everyone would understand that it's business. I don't know. I don't know. Then, then it goes back to what Jeff was saying a long time ago or recently. I don't F with people that F with people that I don't F with anymore. So I don't know. I don't know which one, which way it's going to go. We'll see. We'll see if we hear. He didn't answer. Debbie says, did he see it? I feel like you would never answer that question on a DM. You know what I mean? First of all, that would actually take like writing out a sentence. I don't feel like he he would do that. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Right before he passed away, Norman Lear. I was like, wait, Norman Lear is gone. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Oh, my God. Kathy's going to eat a whole bag of candy today. I'm so glad I could inspire you. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, lots of talk about these uh, bags, these uh, purses. Uh, I forget the long word for me. It's clutchwomen.com, code JL20 for an extra 20% off. And then sarahcolona.com for all of her live shows, her podcast information. Did they give a website for Jody? I feel like they said the name of her podcast. Now I don't remember what it was. Anybody, does anyone listen to, to, to um, Jody's, uh, Jody's podcast? I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, yeah, he would never answer that. I don't feel like Debbie. I don't feel like you would either. Um, oh, are you my podcast? No, that's Heather. That's, um, that's Sarah Colonna's podcast crap. Anyways, what he did talk about is if you, if he, cause he has gotten the wrong text messages before. Now I do not get these fun, wrong text messages for even a lady called in, said that her husband or boyfriend was on some group checks chain uh, like planning a bachelorette party. And then later they were playing, talking about like putting their family member into a home or something. And he wasn't answering. Uh, can you imagine accidentally texting Jeff Lewis, not knowing it was Jeff Lewis. And he starts saying things back to you. That's like super fun. Like which party are we going to? Where's that at? What kind of food are you going to have? Um, you know what I mean? And then hearing about it on the radio going, holy crap. I was just texting with Jeff Lewis. And he was like, Sending me funny stuff back. That'd be hilarious. That would be hilarious. How rude is the name of the podcast? Exactly. Ileana, thank you. That's what she's, that's her famous thing on, um, uh, not Family Matters. Shit, can you think of the name of it? The big show she was on. Anyways, how rude as Stephanie Tanner. Stephanie Tanner. Stephanie Tanner's a grown ass woman. It's so weird, right? Golly, I feel like. Time passes. Like you feel like those people that you watch. Full House. Thank you, Tiffany Chump. Full House. <laughs> and Fuller House. Is Fuller House? That was a huge hit. I guess since, I guess since the he passed away, they, did they stop Fuller House? Yeah. I, I don't think Fuller House is still on. Did they still do it? I feel like they still did it after um that guy passed away in his hotel. Who is that guy's name? I literally have no brain. Literally none. Um, who is he talking about that went on? Oh, Tyler. Tyler is so cute, by the way. Um, so cute in real life. Anyways, he went on a date and they went to a restaurant. I think um, the dark one, the, the Bob Saget. Yes, thank you. Um, whatever it's called. The nice guy. Um, and the guy went splitsies with him. I don't know what you do. Who is single? Who goes out on dates? Uh, do you split the date or does that give off more of a friend vibe? I just feel like that gives off more of a friend vibe for sure. Um, I don't know how that would go over. I, first of all, I don't think Jeff, you th even think Jeff would let, I guess if the guy so if you DM'd Jeff or if you met him through a blind date or you met him somewhere and they asked him out, I guess Jeff would let him buy. But I feel like Jeff's always going to be the one to like take a, take the initiative on asking someone else and doing it right. Um, who knows? Oh, now y'all talking about Uncle Jesse, ALW. Uncle Jesse is so handsome. I mean, that dude hasn't aged, right? I mean, he still looks the same age as the original show, um, for sure. Oh, yeah. Kathy says, if you watch Bob Saget's comedy, you'll see it's no full house. I did hear he was very raunchy in, in, in his comedy, which is funny because he was so wholesome on Full House and Fuller House. And even um, the America's Funniest Video, so wholesome. So it probably confused people if they went to his comedy show and he was as raunchy as he is. Right. Um, Cecily says the person who asked should. So I wonder who asked who out. Like they, they went splitsies. Like there had to have been someone that said, let's go to dinner and here's the time. So when they both put out the, the credit card and then they just split it. Yeah. That is awkward. I don't know. 
Krista says, I would be so shocked if Jeff split any real date. That would be the sign it's not a date. I think so too. I think Jeff, I've said it before, he's very traditional. I think he would definitely think like, you know, that whoever asks someone out has to pay. And I think Jeff is almost always the one that would want to pay. Um, there's a conspiracy around his death. I think there's a conspiracy around everything. Chris has said, I had no idea there was a conspiracy around Bob Saget's death. I mean, I think it was just, they just couldn't figure out what happened. Like there was no medical issue. They've got the video that nobody came into the room. But yeah, I have heard some interesting things about a, how his head got hurt. Yeah, something like that. It's kind of weird, right? There's a memorial. Um. I love that. Kathy, Uncle Jesse, y'all are hilarious. Um, Uncle Jesse is still a snack and I've been married for 30 years. <laughs> um, I don't feel like he had a stroke. That would have cleared everything up right away. That would be on an autopsy right away. They found no drugs, no alcohol. Um, they did videos of like nobody coming in the room, but then like, I feel like one of the doors was, it was something weird. I feel like, I feel like the story was a little bit like not cut and dry. Like they couldn't figure out why he passed away, like medically, right? Um, oh, okay. Something about his dirty jokes. I don't know. Yes, a head injury, right? Didn't they? Didn't he see? I mean, they're all just speculating, right? Because it's all happened inside the hotel room. So. There's clearly no videos, you know what I mean? Um, but it seems like he hit his head on the bed, the 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 bed of, but then they're like, how did that actually kill him though? I don't know. Weird. Yes. Thank you. I knew there was something odd. Debbie says the doors to the adjoining room were unlocked. Okay. So weird. Who knows? I think Jet, though, a brain aneurysm would show on an autopsy, right? Whatever it was, I remember there was no, yes, um, Shay, Shay Blanc, so fancy. It was speculation about a fall or something about the headboard. Yeah, I think there was a little bit of blood on the headboard, something like that. Um, yeah, and like, I think he was, he had already texted with his, you know, he got to the room really late um, because he worked, you know, he's a comedian, so he works really late. Yeah, it was very sad. Very sad. Okay, Justin Martindale and Ryan Bailey were on Jeff Lewis Extended. They just mesh, don't they? I mean, they just, I feel like they're really good friends. I feel like they can tease each other a little bit, but they like lift each other up. So good. Um, Justin Martindale had a birthday recently and he was in Colorado and went to the Shining Hotel. I don't know. I, I, mm, I know it's just a movie, but that movie is freak. E, freak E for sure. Um, uh, I don't know that I would want to go, but I love snowmobiling. So I love that he was talking about going snowmobiling. That is one of my favorite things ever because skiing is just a freaking, like anyone over the age of 20 that can still ski. I think it's exhausting. Uh, so, so exhausting. Yes. Debbie says, I love Ryan and Justin together. They are hilarious. They were hilarious as today. Um, anyways, but then Jeff comes on. Jeff stayed for almost, I think he was on for about 40 minutes, definitely till the second commercial break. Um, so Toby, he was telling lots of bad stories about him on the, the Jeff Lewis live show. Then on the extended, he tells a story about he like keeps the back door open and Patrick, the cat, always tries to go outside and Toby like keeps him back and keeps Toby back inside. So I thought that was actually sweet. Because I mean, if a cat gets out, what if they don't come back? Like if a cat is an indoor cat only, clearly I don't have cats. I've never had cats as a kid or as an adult. Um, I don't think, well, I do think most, ca some cats are indoor, outdoor, right? But it sounds like Patrick is definitely, because I think Zoila used to take the cats on a walk, right? On a leash. So I don't think they're cats that just kind of go outside. But anyways, I thought that was good job, Toby. <laughs> good job, Toby. Yes. 
I agree. I think they both are. They they split them up a few times lately. And I think they're good with everyone. Jet says, I think Justin is good with virtually anyone because he brings it like he will make it work. He puts in the effort. I love that. And he's always in a good mood. He's just always like upbeat. And I don't know. I think he's always good. Um, he did not, Shea Blanc. He did not mention it. Um, oh, it was in Oregon. It was filmed. Kathy says the Shining was filmed in Oregon at Timberline. And we ran through the halls looking for the evil twins when we were younger. Oh, that movie is so scary. Um, oh, Darla, your cat Jagger got out and he was never, you never saw him again. See, that makes me sad. And he didn't want to leave. He just, he got lost. He didn't know where to go. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm good. Are you? Justin's a very positive person and funny. I just think he knows when to, I think they both know when to like put in quips. You know what I mean? Like put in little jabs of stuff. I think it was hilarious. What else? Um. So Jeff tells us Zoila. So we knew that Scary Sherry was going to his birthday dinner. Zoila was there also. I guess I would think I guess I would think Zoila and he said they they were talking like they were like best friends at the dinner party. I guess I thought Zoila and Scary Sherry would know each other really well because I, I figured they both been around so long. They both been around since flipping out days. So but maybe it's something where maybe Jeff always goes to Sherry, Scary Sherry's house or wherever her if she has an office, something like that. Maybe she doesn't necessarily come out of the house. And so she and Zola didn't really know each other that well. I don't know. Oh, I love that. Oh, ski school. Yeah. Um, lots of phone calls about La Farmacia. Lots of conflicting information. Did this scare y'all about going to Mexico or just Cabo in general? There was lots of call, a few calls about like a shakedown, like, you know, maybe some mafia stuff going on. I don't know. It was a little bit. I've never had anything bad happen, but I haven't been. The last time I was in, no, I guess I was technically on a cruise. So we technically go into Mexico. Technically, I guess two years ago, 2022 for spring break in Cabo, but nothing bad happened to us. I don't know. Um, anyways. Ryan's lost a bunch of weight or he is losing weight, but he says it's because like the chumps are comparing him. Oh my God. Um, like he's wanting to, I think it, it it's probably like a real housewife. Like, you know, all of them lose a little bit of weight after their first season. So, you know, I feel like Ryan's getting healthier, you know, because of all the chumps or all the hot chumps around him. Um, lots of callers, lots of callers. Jet says, yeah, same zero interest in traveling to Mexico. Is it, I mean, he's going to such a fancy resort. I mean, I, I you know, I'm sure, um, Hamilton says my family stopped going to Mexico years ago. You know, don't, uh, don't certain countries have like, you know, danger times where they'll say like, we don't even recommend you going on this right now, right? Is that one of them right now? Yep. Oh, somebody asked about Sherry of Terry. I know. Maybe she'll come on again soon for sure. Krista says resorts are being hit now. Mexico is not safe anymore. Oh, that makes me sad. I love Mexico so much, so much, so much. Anyways. Well, thank you so much for joining live. It is way more fun. If you are listening on the replay, get comfortable in comments. Tell us where you're from. Tell us what you think of everything. Do you think it's safe to go to Mexico? All the things. Uh, do you feel like Jeff's ever going to tell us more about him and Heather? I don't know. Dolly Girl. Chicago. Okay. How many levels are there? I don't even know. Dolly Girl says Chicago is a level three on the do not travel list. Okay. Maybe we don't need a Jeff Lewis live show in Chicago. I feel like every U.S. city is probably on the do not travel list. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with everyone. There's only four and it's a level three, meaning bad. Like level four is don't go there. Okay. Now I'm going to have to Google this for sure. Anyways. Ah, thank you.
You have a husky that's 15 years old? Oh, Chicago is extremely dangerous. Maybe that's why Jeff's not going. Level four, do not go. Oh my God. How scary. Okay. Anyways, I will see you tomorrow. Please watch Buying Beverly Hills so we can chat about it. It is so good. If you don't have time for season one, just start with season two. I promise you it's worth it. Thank you, Jet. I did have a great birthday. Thank you so much. And thank you again for all the birthday wishes. It was very sweet. Very, very, very sweet. So I really appreciate it. I love that. Krista says, bye, friends. I love that. I do feel like we're friends. Okay. 